back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're a married couple in love. Oh, so cute. <laughs> that loves the MCU so much that we decided to rank our favorite 100 characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There was no set guidelines for what determined whether or not we loved this character and wanted them to move on or whether or not they were eliminated. It was basically... You've got a feeling. And we had a fireside chat to discuss all these characters. And this is our video for numbers 91 through 100. So number 100 on our list is Janet Van Dyne. It's me. So Janet Van Dyne made it onto the list in the first place because she is a rather significant character to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We see the impact that she has on uh, Hope Van Dyne. We see the impact that she has on Hank Pym. We also know of her contribution because she is the wasp that saved the West Coast in mm. a flashback. So she's a very key character and yet we see so little of her. I also had a rather large problem with the fact that she's been in the quantum realm for god knows how many years and she still has perfect hair and makeup. Number 99 on our list is Monica Rambo. She is Lieutenant Trouble and <laughs> she's a cute kid and her relationship with uh, Carol Danvers is great and it's cute and sweet and you know it's endearing in that movie but that's kind of where it, that's kind of where it ends with with her and she's another character I think is going to rise in our rankings because she's coming back in WandaVision, the grown-up version of Monica Rambo. Number 98 on our list, and this one might be a shocker, it is the Red Skull. Uh, the reason that this one might be surprising is because the Red Skull is the antithesis of Captain America. Yeah. It's a very talked about villain. It's got a lot of hype behind it. Um, the reason that it scored so low on our sheet was simply because it didn't deliver on the hype. They had a great actor in this role. I think there was a lot of potential there from all the history in the comic books, but when it came to actually portraying that on screen, it just fell flat and it fell short. Yeah, they did your wrong, Red Skull. Number 97 on our list is King T'Chaka. And he's on this list because his relationship with T'Challa and Black Panther, he is uh, a very noble king, a wise king. Um, but you know, he had some screw ups along the way and uh, not bringing Killmonger to Wakanda after killing his father, which is his brother, which was T'Challa's brother, or T'Chaka's brother, I'm sorry. Uh, that's, you know, that, that's, a, that's a big mess up. And, you know, T'Challa acknowledges as much um, in Bla the Black Panther movie. You were wrong to abandon him. I chose my people. I chose Wakanda. Our future depended you on- You are wrong! All of you are wrong! Number 96, this is Darren Cross. I gotta say, Darren Cross was a successful villain for me. Yeah. I hated this guy. He was pathetic and slimy and evil and, and, and self-aggrandizing and selfish. I mean, the list goes on and on of all of his bad qualities, which make him a great villain. Uh, he also went after Cassie Lang, which, I'm sorry, anytime you bring someone's kids into it, like, you are next level awful. Number 95 on our list is sticking with the villains. Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. Michael Keaton, love him as an actor and he did a great job in this role. And he's kind of almost a little bit of a relatable villain because he's trying to provide for his family and you know, he was pushed out by the government, by the, you know, and Stark Industries. He had to turn to a life of crime to, to make a living for his family. Um, but then again, he does drop a building on Peter Parker who is a 16 year old kid. Uh, you know, with enhanced powers, but still. He's a character I think will be on the rise in our rankings. If you saw the Morbius trailer, um, you can check out a trailer reaction for that. He does come in at the end of that trailer, so I think there definitely is more Vulture to come, and I think he will rise in our rankings. So that brings us to number 94, which is Dr. Abraham. This is played by Stanley Tucci, and of course, uh, that is a character who I love a lot. I think you really enjoy him as well. He's yeah. one of those uh, great character actors that Sort of whenever he comes on screen, you know you're in good hands because he never delivers a bad performance, mm -hmm. at least not that I've seen yet. He's sort of the the heart, the moral compass. He is the spark that sets Captain America on his path. He sees the potential there when no one else does. This is why you were chosen. Because a strong man who has known power all his life may lose respect for that power, but a weak man knows the value of strength and knows Ambition. Number 93, we're kind of sticking with doctors as well. This is uh, Eric Selvig. He is in Thor and Thor the Dark World and Avengers. He's on this list because, you know, his relationship with Jane Foster, obviously, and his relationship with Thor, really in the first Thor, is where we really fell in love with uh, Eric Selvig. And then in the Avengers, he kind of becomes a mindless, uh, you know, zombie to Loki. And then he's crazy in Thor the Dark World, and we don't really see him much outside of that. But in the first Thor, 
you know, he is the one that picks up Thor when he when he's down. You know, he's he's there for Thor when Thor needs him the most. Number 92 on our list is Surtur. The he was Thor Ragnarok and he's the devil with a tiara on his head. It's a crown. And that opening scene in Thor Ragnarok with uh, between Thor and Surtur was really set the tone for the whole for the whole movie. And and I, I was our favorite Thor movie. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people didn't like it cuz they thought it was too jokey. Um, I think it set the tone for Thor going forward, and I yeah. think we finally see Thor hit his groove. Yep, exactly. I think Chris Hemsworth himself said he didn't really connect with the character until Thor Ragnarok. And he's a little bit, and he's important to the cinematic universe as well because he destroys Asgard and is the, one, is the reason that they're able to defeat Hela ultimately. And that brings us to number 91, and this will round out our first 10 in the elimination game for our top 100 characters. It's Antony. You can probably guess who made sure that this guy got on the list. <laughs> he's the pet. He yeah. is just the the quintessential pet best friend. All right, Anthony, please don't drop me this time. Yes, he's an ant, but let's be honest, the qualities of a dog are really there. I mean, in terms of his loyalty to Scott mm. Lang, his eagerness to help and to please his master. Um, I, I just think that there was so much in this character that really gave us more understanding and empathy of Scott Lang. Yeah. It was really there to make us better like and understand Scott Lang and see the humanity within this comic book world. As well as to hate Darren Cross even yes. more when he kills Antony. Oh. <laughs> that, is, that is definitely there. All right, so thanks so much for uh, checking out our video for the top 100 uh, Marvel characters, number 91 through 100. And uh, what you thought, if you thought, you know, if these characters should be higher or lower, maybe not on this list, let us know, drop down in the comments below what you thought about these characters that we've covered so far. And uh, please continue to join us as we go even further on our list. Next up is number 81 through 90. Also, everybody, just because it seems a little bit like there might be an elephant in the room, we don't want to not address that possibility. Uh, we're kind of living in some bizarre times right now. Yeah. Um, the coronavirus is sweeping across not just our country, but the world. Um, the government and the news reporters are throwing around scary words like pandemic. Uh, you might be seeing things in your own friends, families, colleagues, parents, coworkers, whatever that maybe make you a little bit nervous. So... All we want to say is that when you are out there on social media or are talking with friends and perhaps exposing yourself to what the information is that is available, make sure that you're looking at the CDC and the World Health Organization for your facts. It's very important to know what's really going on because there is a lot of misinformation out there, especially yeah. on the internet. And, and let's remember that we're all in this together. Yes. And that, you know, uh, that's that that's the best part of, of humanity. And, you know, if you're like using the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, Thanos, when he wanted, he wanted to wipe out humanity, and like Earth was the problem because we're fighters, and when we band together and you know stick together, there's nothing we can't accomplish. Be be kind to one another out there, all right. Don't don't deck somebody over a roll of you know toilet paper out there, all right. As with all things in life, this too shall pass. Yeah. So just make sure that you're. I think Ken gave a great message. Be kind to each other. Look out for one another. And don't lose your yourself, your goodness to hysteria and panic because there are facts. Find the facts and just be informed and you'll be fine. Yeah, and we'll be here with you to uh, hopefully keep you entertained along the way and give you we'll something try. to do. <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you're told to stay at home from your work or school. Uh, like us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so let's, uh, you know, let's... Let's talk about other things that, that are more fun, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, all right? So that's why join us down in the comments below, all right? Yeah. Thank you so much for checking us out. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe.